Polynesian method of navigation, ancient navigation, in populating and settling these islands was discovery. I look at uh, the missions of the rockets going to the moon and all these places for discovery. It, ha it all had to start from somewhere. You know, and it started from a, the way I feel, it was a group of individuals that wanted to explore and settle the Pacific Islands. If you're on a ship about a thousand miles away from the island and you lose the satellites, there's no GPS anymore. You better know where you are. Because you know, three quarters of the world is covered by water. We just have to have a lot of more respect for our ocean. And that's why I say, I think the ancient Polynesian traditional navigation, they had a lot of respect for the ocean because they lived off it. All the Pacific Islands are surrounded by, by water. And that was the means of transportation. The ocean was their highways, going from one island to another atoll. It's an art that I feel very strong that we should never lose. It's an identity to our Polynesians. Uh, navigators are uh, selected by their, their uncles and the masters of their clan. They select the best fishermen, best uh, skilled people in the community. And then they, they go and they tell the chief, and then the chief uh, get all, the whole community involved in supporting the, that person that's going to become a navigator. The steps uh, to become a navigator, uh, we have uh, 12 navigation schools. So it depends on uh, which school you, you go to. It's, we call it IU. The steps is you learn the, you learn the moon phases first, learn fishing, learn uh, the months, uh, and then stars, learn the stars. Uh, learn uh, the land, yeah, the land, reefs, and uh, the weather. Then you can start start to go out on the canoe and to sort for edges. Yeah, the feeling for me when I feel out there in the open ocean is the uh, the connection with nature. Yeah, you can really you can really sense, you know, what's going to happen, the pattern of the wave where your canoe is turning. For preparation for long voyage, I would. Uh, I would check the weather first, look at the stars, the fighting stars, and make sure the weather is going to be good for that voyage, and gather all the supplies, safety stuff, and make sure all my crews are okay, and set out for the voyage. Selection of navigators on my island is not really a selective thing kind of no selection because one has to learn the knowledge from his father or from his uncle. And people don't say like you're going to be the navigator. People look at someone whose father a navigator you know, can assume and believe that the son will become a navigator in the future. So the process of Selecting, I would say, began when one is born into a navigator's family and then keep learning and learning and learning. And then the whole community and other navigators, older navigators, look at the new navigators as, okay, he can uh, uh, become a navigator and uh, a good navigator. Experience in the ocean and uh, for myself, I was kind of unstable the first time I said on my fo first voyage. I uh, kind of a little panic, but I always remember what my grandfather tells me, that if you're not brave enough, you cannot go anywhere. You're not a navigator. So you have to have courage to apply the knowledge that you have learned. So I always remember that. And after that, I just, I like being on a canoe. I like voyaging. When, especially when I'm in the ocean, I feel at, always feel at ease. My mind's so clear. Look around, surrounded by a big body of water, blue and clear. It makes my mind clear. I forgot things happen on land, and it's just, I always enjoy it. 
uh, for every navigator that does navigate the canoes now, uh, you have you have this special sense, or things are recognized in you from your teachers, these qualities or these traits that you have that they see within you that um, you do have the potential to to do this, and so it's really as a navigator being aware, you know, of your surroundings and being active in the sense of recognizing those things and uh, being able to be committed enough, um, focused enough, brave enough to make those decisions when they're necessary to. Fishing for the navigators on the canoe, it, it's, it's a really important thing because really as, as, the, as the navigator of the canoe, you're the father of the canoe, so really the ability to fish, to sustain the life of the canoe, it, fish is a vital part of, of sustaining this canoe. And really, maybe even in, in, this, in that sense of fishing being important, even as a metaphor, if we can't feed our people in this day and time, um, you know, for a canoe, we don't rely on anybody bringing us supplies. We rely upon the skill of everyone that's aboard that canoe. We rely upon knowing, like you said, in Micronesia, knowing where those resources are and knowing that those resources will be there, you know, to sustain our people, not just for tomorrow, but generations that will come after us. I think all those, all those values that, that, that we look at in a navigator I think it, it really takes it it takes a community to develop a navigator, really, because when you have a, a community that cares about those things, about those values, then you have a community that supports this type of development in people. But when you have a community that values other things, then that's where our, our whole society starts to turn to. So when it's just like in now in this day and time, we start to again, again recognize those things about being, being brave, being knowledgeable, being focused, paying attention to our environment, you know, even as simple as aloha. You know, for some people that's not simple. It can be a complex thing for some people, but yet, when your, your community have those type of values, then you have the potential to, to develop great, great people.